Welcome to Mac Voices TV. This is the Talk of the Mac community. I'm Chuck Joyner, and I've got my buddy Don McAllister on the other side to talk about, well, his new his newest project. It seems like he's always got something going. Don, it's great to have you. Thanks for coming. Hi, Chuck. Oh, thanks for inviting me on. It's always good to see you and see you in this time as well. We're on video, which is a uh, something different for us. I don't think we've done a, a video Mac Voices before. Not uh, I, we did, did did one in person at Blog World. That's right. We, That's but right. we were face to face. So this time. <laughs> We're on either side of that big body of water. Uh, that's right. That's right, and yeah. it's uh, it's looking good as well. Yeah, you you look mm. great too. It's it's always fun to look into your magic workshop and see what all is, <laughs> is going on there. It's like okay, no. yeah. Well, the thing is, that it's a complete tip. You're sort of uh, the, the the camera is carefully framed, so you just see certain parts of the uh, the studio stroke office. So uh, all the rubbish is sort of over there, so you can't see. <laughs> Why do you think I had that screen on? <laughs> <laughs> that's a good idea. It it hides a multitude of sins. <laughs> and hey, I want to uh, apologize to you and to the listeners in case we get a little extraneous noise i've got some construction being done here at the mac voices stronghold so you 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 grab it and get the guys to do it when they can but i didn't want to miss the opportunity to talk to don about seo tutor for iphoto for ios did i get that right it's a bit of a long-winded one that one it's it's one of the well it's the fourth of a series of tutorials that i've done and it's specifically about the iphoto the new version of iphoto that runs on iOS, so it's of course it's available for the for the iPhone or for the iPad as well. So a bit of a tongue tongue twister, but uh, yeah, SEO tutor for iPhone on iOS. For the folks that made sorry, iPhoto, I, I said <laughs> iPhone, <then. laughs> even I can't say it. Yeah, SEO tutor for iPhoto on iOS. That's better. Well, for the folks that didn't see us uh, and the conversation we had at Blog World in Los Angeles. Talk about what SEO Tutor is. I think everyone probably knows by now Screencasts Online, but what is SEO Tutor? Yeah, well, the Screencasts Online is the weekly uh, tutorials that I do, and I, I'm sort of, I've bumped them up now to two a week. I do an iOS show, and I also do a Mac show. And uh, it's, it's a, a membership system, so, you know, I still have the free content, but each weekly show, or both weekly shows now, go out to the members. And I've always had people asking, um, I don't really want a full membership, but there are certain shows that I'd like just to buy sort of as a one-off. And I've always sort of resisted that because, to be honest, I, I feel more comfortable with the membership system because it's sort of like a regular income rather than relying on just doing a couple of tutorials and hoping people will buy them. And so I've sort of shied away from selling things individually. But when the App Store came along, I sort of thought, well, you know, I could probably kill two birds with one stone and, and do something with the membership system and apps and sort of I started to think about all these fantastic ideas, you know, things I could do with an application within the App Store of, of having it for the members and then selling apps separate, uh, selling tutorials separately within the app. And it, it, and it all got really complex and I sort of left it for a bit because it was sort of too much to take in. And then I suddenly realized towards the end of last year, I actually did see some other tutorials appearing on the App Store that uh, I was being, you know, too complex, trying to run too quickly, really. And um, what I could do is just sell individual apps. Um, not every app, not not each app, uh, not each application or tutorial that I do every week, but just occasionally, you know, some of the larger ones, I could actually bundle them up and sell them as a separate app. So uh, that was the idea. I thought, well, let's go ahead and, and see how easy it would be to cr- create sort of like a framework app that I could use to um, insert content in and sell that as an, as an app on the App Store. And that would then sort of, you know, uh, meet the requirements of people who perhaps only wanted one or two shows every couple of months. And um, and that's the, with the sort of the genesis of it, really. I really like the idea, and I, I liked it when you first announced it. I like it even more now because it's kind of fleshed itself out. It doesn't cut the, the regular screencast online subscribers out. It brings some other people in, maybe introduces you to another audience that – under no circumstances would they be prepared to watch uh, a screencast online every week. But yeah. when they have the topic that they really want to learn about, this is a way for them to take advantage of, of the excellent content that you produce. Yeah, and, and I don't really want to sort of, and the, and the idea isn't to create a separate revenue stream that you know the members also have to buy into. All, all the content that I create, uh, I always create for the members first. So it's sort of repurposing that content. So, you know, the members are, are paying for the, the, the weekly service. So they get the, the, the content straight away. You know, it's all fresh, brand new for them. Uh, and then I might leave it three or four weeks, uh, in fact, longer than that, to be honest. I think this, this new iPhoto one is the, is the one I've done most recently. But uh, some of the other content I've produced is stuff that I've done a couple of months ago. So it's just really uh, sort of repurposing stuff I've done in the past and, and repackaging it, really. 
Um, and, and that just seems to be a sensible thing to do because I'm not sort of snubbing the, uh, the, the, the members. They're still getting the content. But this is just another avenue for, for people who, as you say, perhaps wouldn't want to watch a show every week. But, uh, you know, they do want to see some of the sort of major topics that I cover in the show. So I have to ask, you say it's repackaging and repurposing. Do you do anything from a value-add standpoint, or is it just the aggregation and maybe polishing the uh, the in points and out points a little? Yeah, I mean, they do get re-edited, so I bring them up to date um, when I do release them. Uh, some of the, um, I mean, the first couple of titles, I'm, I've done one for the iPad, I've done one for the Mac, so they were really intended for brand new users to either platform. So if someone just gets a new iPad, they can download the SEO Tutor for iPad app. And that really doesn't assume anything. Uh, it assumes that you're brand new to the iPad. And it's, it's about two hours long, two and a half hours long. And it takes you through the whole thing, you know, of owning an iPad and uh, all the built-in features and the, even the physical controls, etc. cetera. Um, and similarly with the Mac, you know, it, it, the last Mac shows, the last basic Mac shows I did were probably three or four years ago now. And things have moved on. So, again, I, I re-recorded some episodes for people who are brand new to the Mac, never seen a Mac before, they can just buy this application, and that will lead them you know, right the way through. Um, as, as far as adding value, um, I mean, I always have chapters within my video tutorials, but the, the application itself is, is a really nice application, and we've spent a lot of time uh, developing the player so that you sort of get an optimized player to play the video back, so you can do such things as obviously control the volume. Uh, you can control the speed as well, so you can slow things down or speed things up. Uh, there's, uh, it's fully chapterized, so there's lots of chapters, and we have a pop-up chapter list, so you can jump directly to any chapter within the application. Uh, it remembers where you left off, so that if you, you know, watch one or two chapters and then switch off the application and go and do something else and come back, it will resume from the same point. Uh, and the very first one I did, the Lion one, I actually uh, in, um, uh, commissioned some multilingual uh, subtitles as well. So that first release went out with about five different languages. Uh, each application has English subtitles. They all have English subtitles, but the first one line that had the um, had English, it had Portuguese, it had uh, Spanish, it had uh, even simplified Chinese as well. So quite a few uh, different foreign languages were in there as well. So we have SEO Tutor for Lion. Mm -hmm. We have SEO Tutor for iPad. What are the other, and I know we the one we're going to talk about, but what's the third one? Uh, that's the SEO Tutor for iPad. So that's for the new iPad users. Okay, so it's iPad, Lion. And Mac. And Mac, okay. Mm -hmm. And just to be clear, this is an iOS uh, app, or is this a Mac app, or is it both? It's both, actually, yeah. Um, I've been working with a guy called Simon Wolf from Otter Software. Simon's the genius behind the coding. I mean, I, I don't code, um, but obviously I've put a lot into the design and, um, uh, you, you know, the, the usability of the app. But Simon's the actual coder. So um, basically what he's done is to, we started off with just the Mac app. So originally it went onto the Mac store, uh, the Mac app store, so we could actually you know, sell the applications on the Mac app store because they were mainly Lion and Mac. And then he's then developed that into an iOS. He's ported it across to iOS. And uh, again, it was initially just iPad. But with the release uh, of um, the iPhoto application, it's now a universal app. So all the applications now work on um, anything basically that can run iOS 5. So that's the iPod Touch, the iPad, and also the iPhone. Even the iPhone 3GS as well. I've included uh, two different resolutions of the video because there are some limitations in the resolution of the video that you can use on some of the older devices. But it will work on the, the um, uh, iPhone 3GS as well as the, the latest iPhone 4 and 4S. So this sounds like all done all the time if I want. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a lot of work, to be honest. It's, but it's been really interesting to see, you know, how, it, uh, how you actually do develop an app and how you, um, you know, from design to coding to even the frustrations of trying to put it through the Mac App Store and through the iOS App Store, you know, and sort of dealing with Apple and some of the issues that came out of, of trying to put apps in that had even simple things like, uh, try and get approval for an app that's got Mac in the title or iPad in the title because that's a trademark. And, you know, we, we went to and fro with Apple trying to get them to uh, accept some of the applications because of the um, some of the guidelines that they give about not using product names or, or registered trademarks in, in app titles. But, of course, if you're doing a tutorial about the Mac or a tutorial about the iPad, you have to have that in the in the title of the application itself. And uh, luckily, we were, we were able to persuade Apple that that was sensible. So they, they've sort of given us a dispensation to do that. That's good to hear. It seems so obvious, and, and I agree with you. Otherwise, how would you identify what it's about? 
But that doesn't mean that, you know, Apple can't be a little strange sometimes. Well, that's right. That's right. But the whole process of, uh, you know, submitting an app and getting it approved, uh, it's been a real eye up now and I have to sort of, you know, give a big shout out to the developers who do this on a daily basis because it is quite frustrating and it's quite scary as well. Uh, I can well understand, you know, people who've put months and months and months of work into developing an app and it's their only app, putting it into the app store and having it rejected. It's quite... Um, it's quite scary sometimes because it, you, you do feel a little bit powerless and you have to go in and, and you know, sort of make the changes that they need and, and hope it gets approved on the next cycle. Is it fair to infer from that that you did have some rejections? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, on the name, uh, it was, it's mainly been the name, um, not on the technical side of the application itself, but, you know, just getting the, the naming sorted out. Um, I mean, it was something, the very first release, I was actually going to call them new to something, so new to Lion or new to Mac. And they... Um, they, they wouldn't accept that because I couldn't use the two. I could say for Mac or for iPad, but I couldn't say to Mac or to iPad. So that's why it's now SEO Tutor for Mac or SEO Tutor for iPad. So uh, very, very weird. I still like it. That way it, give, it, it gives your branding. It, it lets people know that you do other things other yeah. than just these apps. So. Yeah, yeah. And also the nice thing is you can just search for SEO Tutor and they all pop up in the search. That's, uh, that's quite a, a, a neat thing that uh, I hadn't quite appreciated. Well, let's talk about the new one, mm -hmm. SEO Tutor for iPhoto, iPhoto? for oh, no. iOS. That's the one. Got it right. Okay. <laughs> Don, when I watched the, uh, the the video of the keynote when this, or excuse me, the presentation when when this was announced, uh, along with the new iPad, it it seems to be one of those. Uh, one of those apps that's just going to drive sales. It just it looks so cool. It looks so sexy. Mm -hmm. And you think, all right, is it really going to be that good? You get your hands on it, and, and I'm a notorious not digital photographer. Mm -hmm. And it's still a blast to play with, and you can actually do some really sexy, exciting things, and in some ways even easier than uh, on, your, on your Mac on your desktop. Well, that's right. I mean, it's a very powerful application. But the, the thing that I found, uh, I mean, I watched the keynote as well and was blown away and thought, this is great. And then I thought, and then I actually got the application and I, I sort of uh, hit, hit a bit of a brick wall, to be honest, because, and it's the same, not just iPhoto, with, with a lot of iOS applications, because on the Mac, we're used to having the menu and drop down menus and, you know, buttons to press. And, and, you know, if you get a new application and you're not quite sure how to use it, you can, you can just go and have a look at the menu structure and you can roughly understand, you know, which bits do what. But on the iOS applications, there's no real visual clues um, especially when you have to do things like, you know, touch the screen, touch the sky and, and move it in a certain direction to uh, bring in some of the controls. So I, I did, even though I'd watched the keynote, um, I, I still had to go back to the keynote to watch what the guy did to actually fully understand exactly some of the things that you know, it was capable of and then sort of read through all the help files, etc. But on first glance, there's so much in there that's hidden uh, and unintuitive, really, that uh, I thought, well, this is a, a you know, prime candidate for doing a really good screencast to bring out some of those hidden gestures and uh, things that mightn't be uh, completely obvious when you first get the application. So I spent a lot of time sort of uh, working through all the help files and, and experimenting with the different gestures, etc., and brought them all into the application so that people could actually watch the application. And it's sort of like watching the keynote, but on steroids, you know, it's, it's, it's more detailed, there's more information in there, and I, I go through more of the features. But until you actually see it being used, it, I, I personally think it's quite hard to um, to, to get the full benefit from it. I agree 100%. And it's one of the things I keep wondering as we get more sophisticated iOS apps, if we're going to see a little more of this, because there's not some certain uh, standard conventions. And I've, I'm not a programmer, so I don't know how stringent Apple's guidelines are for iOS or if they're as stringent as the Mac, Mac has been. But you get the feeling that there are people experimenting with all new ways of doing things because yeah. of this. Uh, yeah, well, that's right. And a lot of it's to do with um, th uh, things like tap and hold. I mean, I, I've just done another, uh, th one of this week's uh, tutorials is a, an application. In fact, you know Dan, Dan Pahadi. Oh, sure. um, he yeah, did, yeah he, he does the on cue, the music player, which is a great music player that I, uh, I've sort of been following for, for a while. He's, he released a, a new version, I think version five, uh, a couple of weeks ago. And there are some great gesture based actions you can do in that particular application. But just to look at the application, you wouldn't know because you see a playlist of, of song tracks and yes you can flick up and down to see them and you might tap on them but you can, if you tap and hold you can actually move the individual you know tracks around and, and re rearrange your playlist and yeah you can look through the, the you know the help files and read it but people don't like reading the help files whereas if they, if they see a video you know i can actually demonstrate right you know don't just tap it tap and hold and you can move it there you can move it there so 
Um, people can be very, very creative with these gestures, but it's very difficult for them to give visual feedback. And that's where videos, I think, really come into their own, you know, to demonstrate how to, to use these gesture-based commands so that people get the most out of the applications. Now, I can't quite see from my picture what is on the shelf behind you, but they look like they're either boxes or they're really thick books. And I've got a bookcase somewhere in the house that's filled with a lot of those really thick books. Mm -hmm. They're wonderful, and but it almost feels like the time has passed for those massive manuals or, or how-tos. We're now in a multimedia world, and you're right. I'd much rather sit down for 10, 15, 20 minutes and learn how mm -hmm. to do what I want to do than dig through a book. And admittedly, a book may be easier to reference, but mm -hmm. to actually learn it? Uh, no, I think the video is the way to go. Yeah, especially on the iOS apps because, you know, they are so visually orientated. You know, there's, there's so much to do with the actual visual interface uh, and how you interact as well. It's not just looking at the interface. It's how you physically interact with the interface that you can only really um, clearly explain using a video. And even then, you, you know, Apple don't make it easy because there are no um, mechanisms on the iPad or on the iPhone to reflect back any touch points that you, you know, when you do touch the screen which is always a problem. And um, in the past, I've previously had to go down the jailbreak route to actually enable some special utilities to enable me to uh, show on the screen you know, where I'm actually tapping and, and moving. Uh, some apps are okay because they do highlight you know, when you touch a button, but most of them don't. So I've had to sort of spend um, more time and more work um, making sure that people know exactly which part of the screen it is I'm about to touch if it's not obvious. So I'll, I'll sort of um, put special animations in where I highlight the, side, the, the part of the screen which I'm actually going to touch or move or... Uh, and just to make it easier, really, for the eye to follow the action on screen. Don, your your style has always been showing how to do things, not saying, okay, we're going to walk through every menu or every command, mm -hmm. and here are the five options under that, and then the three options under each of those. You sit down, you walk us through a project just like I would want to do it, or maybe you obviously would want to do it to, to show us how. What approach did you take or what kind of projects did you uh, use for the iPhoto app with uh, the iOS? Yeah, well, I, I, I try to break it down into, into logical progressions, really. Uh, and it's the same for any application, you know, how, how you progress through. Um, in fact, strangely, that with the, with the iPhoto uh, application, uh, the first thing I look at is, the, is not iPhoto. It's actually the photo library. It's, it's, it's the relationship that the photo library has with iPhoto. Because that confuses a lot of people. Um, you know, I've got my photos in iPhoto, but hang on, they're already in, in, in the photo library as well. And what happens if I change my photo in iPhoto? Is that reflected in the photo library? And how do I get them off? So, so I actually spent a, I spent a little bit of time in the introduction, uh, probably the first uh, four or five minutes, explaining the relationship between iPhoto and the photo library to sort of set the foundation, really, so people understand uh, where the photos are coming from, you know, what happens when you save them to the camera roll, etc. So that was the sort of the first you know, foundation laid. And then from then, I, I look at viewing photos, you know, how you would view photos, how you browse photos, and then starting to look at the uh, editing side of things and, you know, what the controls are and uh, some of the more hidden aspects of, of how you actually use iPhoto on iOS. And then sort of moving on to the journal side of things, you know, using these new journals, and then how you actually get your photos off your iPad into, um, you know, into iPhoto or Aperture or via iTunes. There's a lot here uh, for, for a relatively simple photo adjustment app. They've done a great job of putting mm -hmm. a lot of features in, a lot of functionality, and especially with the new camera in the iPad, I think it's going to be one of the things that's helped sell a new iPad because mm -hmm. now I, I did a show a while back on how you took photos and moved them from your iPhone to your iPad to your Mac. Yep. You don't have that now. They've, they've really simplified so many of those things. Yeah, I think, I think the intention really is for, and, and again, it's something I explain in the video, that there's no real um, cross-transfer between iPhoto and iPhoto on iOS. I, they're not really intended to seamlessly migrate photos from one application to the, to the other. Uh, my impression is that iPhoto on iOS is meant to be a standalone application. You can still bring photos in and take them out again, but there's no sort of seamless migration of photos from from your Mac to the iPad itself. I think that will come. I think that will come probably when Mountain Line comes out and we get the iCloud piece sorted. But um, I think they are positioning it for people who buy an iPad and they want to use it as their primary computer. And, you know, that's why there's so much functionality built into iPhoto on iOS. They, they basically, you know, expect someone to be able to pick up an iPad 
and use that as their sole computer, which is, uh, it's the direction they're going anyway, isn't it, really? It certainly feels like it. How do you feel about the approachability of editing photos on the iPad as opposed to the Mac? It seems to me that editing things on, there's the Photoshop aura of things let's put it that way mm -hmm. uh, we don't need to use photoshop but that's where everybody looks and thinks oh my god you know it'll take me six months to get up to speed and, sure. and be able to do anything on the ipad with with iphoto or with a lot of the other editing applications you can go in there and you can just play to your heart's content and it's just so much less intimidating yeah, I think, again, that's down to the touch gestures, I think. I think that's, that's down to the gesture-based approach that Apple are using. Um, it's, it's, it seems more fun. You know, you're, you're actually directly manipulating the pixels on screen with your, with, with your finger. Uh, I mean, some of the really nice effects, such as lightening and, and sharpening and uh, um, changing some of the face tones, you actually can paint specific areas of the photo just using your finger and, and, and use effects, not just for the entire photo, but on specific areas, and you can actually trace that out with your finger. And, and I think that whole direct interaction with the data, um, not just in iPhoto, in, in other applications, you know, when you're actually touching the screen and manipulating data physically, um, I, I think that just lends itself to a more enjoyable experience, to be honest. I just talked to the folks at Wacom uh, at Photoshop World, mm -hmm. and we had a little bit of discussion, some on camera, some off, about how this has been affecting them. And I can't help but think about the first couple of times I tried to use a tablet and if, with my artistic skills, it just was not a good idea. Sure. Um, but there's something about that finger painting thing. Like you say, it's more visceral. I already know how to use this, mm -hmm. whereas I don't have to figure out how to use a stylus. Uh, yeah. So it it just feels different and, and, again, more approachable. And I think that's why I'm excited about seeing you give me the training that I need to get even better with it because with your style you are very approachable so it seems like it's just a win-win for everyone yeah I, mean, I try to be i mean you do lose an element of precision i think it has to be said with using your finger as a as a you know a stylus um and i actually do have a wacom uh, pen tablet that i use with my mac uh not for drawing but mainly as a mouse replacement if i'm honest you know i use it for uh, for navigating and, and just instead of a mouse or a trackpad but um there, there are some i mean people are, are developing new things for the ipad to to uh, sort of build in the precision. I've seen a couple of applications that, you know, where you might write on the screen, they actually will give you a large panel at the bottom of the screen where you can write with your finger and then that panel shrinks and you, you get the smaller writing sort of embedded within the application. So there are, there are techniques that people are now starting to be very creative about and bring out that will enable you to be more precise um, on the iPad. I mean, if you, you only have to look at some of the video applications. I mean, Avid would do a great video uh, editor, uh, probably in some respects better than iMovie. And that's all, you know, gesture-based. It's all, you can use your finger to do some quite precise things. But uh, we've still got a little bit of way to go, but uh, it's, it's really coming on leaps and bounds. Don, I think we've said a couple times during this discussion a, a way to go, what's coming next, the way they're going, the direction they're going. It really does feel, uh, unlike, unlike anything we've seen for a while, that we are in an aggressive mode to get somewhere, not yeah. quite sure where it's going to be, and we can we could argue that for the next hour. But that really things are changing, and they're changing almost before our eyes. Mm -hmm. And I I think that's a good thing. I mean, I I think that there are a lot of people that are intimidated by it because of the costs of adopting new technology and the time yeah. to get to learn them. But at the mm -hmm. same time, if you if you're getting to a point where you're putting more power in more people's hands in a more accessible fashion. Again, it seems like the, the perfect way to go, and it's hard to imagine people not wanting to go there. Yeah, I mean, that was one of the reasons for the, um, the reason for me adopting two shows a week. I mean, I, I used to cover iOS-related um, aspects of iPad and iPhone in Screencast Online when it was just a single show each week. But, um, I mean, the basic premise of, the, of Screencast Online was Mac tutorials. And although I didn't get a lot of pushback, I did get the occasional email from people saying, look, actually, I'm, you know, I'm a Mac guy, and I don't, I'm not really interested in iOS stuff. Uh, so I sort of, uh, towards the end part of last year, I sort of backed off a bit on the iOS, but it was sort of becoming so important that uh, I felt I couldn't really not cover it. And, and that was the reason why I sort of split it into two and, and had the Mac show and the iOS show. And um, I have to say, you know, the iOS side of thing, uh, there's still plenty of Mac applications for me to cover, but the sheer number of iOS stuff that's coming out, you know, it's, it's amazing how many new applications are being developed and, and released and, and really powerful and comprehensive applications as well. Um, you know, I think... It, 
making that split at the beginning of the year to have the two shows was, was the right thing to do because if I'd stuck down the Mac track, I'd be so frustrated now because there's so many cool things I want to show people on iOS and I wouldn't be able to. So, you know, that was, that was a good move as far as I was concerned. But, you know, it can only get better. The new iPad as well, you know, an amazing machine. And the, the quality of using the iPad, I mean, I must, I must say, you know, I, I'd probably use the iPad, let's see, you know, um, probably 50-50 at this, at this point. You know, if, if, I'm, if, if I'm at my desk, obviously I'm going to use my uh, MacBook Air. Uh, but again, I have my iPad next to me and, um, you know, more often than not, I might just flick across the iPad, uh, say, to quickly access Twitter or to have a quick look at mail if I'm doing editing rather than having a separate mail session on, the, uh, on my monitor. I'll actually refer to the iPad and I virtually do all my reading and all my browsing on the iPad now. And, uh, you know, it's becoming more and more of a, uh, a day-to-day machine for, and, uh, you know, the machine I prefer to go to for some applications. And it also seems like maybe we are going to a more multi-screen environment. You know, that now I know that you work on, I think you do, I shouldn't say that, you work on at least two monitors, don't you? Yes, that's right, yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. and, and we all know how productive that has become. Mm-hmm. But you're right, now I find that I have a third in front of me. Yes, I'm, yeah. I'm with you. You know, the iPad's right over there. It's mm-hmm. it's just going to be, and in some ways, because of the interface, it's a better machine for Twitter. Yeah, it's definitely. a better machine for certain things in email. Yeah. So it it is really, it's found its place, I think, and the people that still see it as just a consumption device, just an entertainment device, I think they're making a mistake. Well, that's right, but but it does have that place as well, and I, I think it's going to become more and more the the second screen, you know, it's a multi-screen when I'm at my desk, you know, have it next to me, but also when I'm watching TV, it's always next to me when I'm watching TV, even if it's um, not TV related, it's just so easy to pick it up and, and, and grab it. Um, but more and more people are using it in conjunction with TV, you know, to look up information or to follow along with TV shows on Twitter and things like that. And we're seeing lots of applications now that are meant for TV viewing, you know, to, to have a, a second screen with more information on, um, you know, on your portable device, on your iPad. And I think we'll see more and more of that. And that's probably a big part of Apple's, you know, TV strategy, I would think, having the iPad, uh, not only just controlling your TV, but also giving you additional information as well. And the one hole in Apple strategy still seems to be the one that you fill so well, and that is yeah. the, the training part. Uh, you, our friends over at the Take Control, and mm-hmm. a number of you know other authors and producers, uh, you're putting out things, and it may be a better better infrastructure for, for that. That way, uh, everyone gets a different access. Now we we pick on you a lot because of your level pool, pool access, <laughs> which is sort of your secret weapon, I think, but. I think it's fascinating to talk to two or three authors, two or three video producers that have covered the same topic because they all have their own style and they all come at well, it from right. a different angle. That's right. That's right. Yeah, definitely. Uh, and, and people, um, you know, two, people, two different people could actually teach the same software package completely differently. They have different styles, different approaches. Um, and some people gel with some people, some people gel with others. So there's, there's plenty of uh, space in, 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 in this particular area. Um, you know, and that's the nice thing with the membership. And what I found is the membership has grown because people have, um, those people who like my style have stuck with me and, you know, and they've become members and they've, you know, I've had people going back from when I started like six or seven years ago. Um, but you know, it's, it, it is a, a very difficult thing for people to do. I mean, Apple do do their bit, they, but they very much specialize on two or three minute videos showing you the sort of top level functionality. They don't really take you through the entire process. Um, and there's this fallacy as well that video, you know, people have a short attention span and they can't watch more than five or 10 minutes worth of video or they'll just switch off. Well, you know, my, my videos, <clears throat> the iOS videos are normally about 20 minutes long and the, the Mac videos, uh, probably between 30 minutes and 40 minutes. Uh, I can see them sort of evening out, to be honest. I can, I can well imagine moving into the future, sort of having, uh, like half hour Mac and half hour iOS because they're becoming so complex to cover now. But, um, yeah, in some respects, I'm quite glad Apple don't cover it in, in the depth that I do because it you know leaves some space for me. But uh, you know, it's 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 definitely a, an area that that you know is is it really does need some third parties to step in and and uh, and help people uh, learn about this new technology. So, where does Don McAllister and Screencast Online and SEO Tutor go next? And I know you you probably are like Apple; you don't want to talk about unannounced <laughs> projects. But um, <laughs> what what can we expect? Uh, more of the same? Um, well, over the next six months, obviously, the, the, I'm going to carry on doing the the two shows a week, Screencast Online. That's going to carry on 
well, indefinitely, as far as I can see. Um, as far as the app side of things, I, I, I have got like Aperture shows. I've got uh, iPhoto for Mac shows as well, which I'd like to turn into applications and, and sort of put them on the App Store because you know there are they are applications, uh, quite large applications that people will benefit from. Um, but in the summer, um, again, working with Simon, uh, looking at redeveloping um, one app to you know, one app to rule them all, as it were. So sort of like a, an application for the members that members can can use to log into the site and to download member content and also be able to, you know, um, sell individual tutorials to people who aren't members. So, you know, the, the original idea I had a, a year or two ago, which was too big for me to sort of take on, um, now that we've got the, the core app built, um, it's, it's now a matter for Simon to sit down and, and work out how we can sort of bolt these extra things on. So I would hope sort of by the middle of this year that we'll have um, a single screencast online app that people can uh, probably download for free from the App Store and then have in-app purchases and uh, allow members to get to the site and download the member content, stuff like that. So that's probably over the next six months, but who knows, you know, going out further than that, what's going to happen? Things are moving so quickly. And you never know what Apple may throw at you in between. Well, that's right. That's right. We still, um, you know, they've got lots of, uh, as Tim Cook said, they've got lots of uh, amazing products in the pipeline. And because it's not just software as well. I, I still like to cover hardware. You know, I still uh, review hardware and, um, you know, the, the new Apple TV and stuff like that. I, I, I like um, sort of, as well as showing people how to use the software, how to use the hardware as well, best way to configure it, stuff like that. And we're expecting lots of new, new hardware this year, hopefully. <laughs> I, I think hopefully I keep looking yeah. at the credit well, card bill, and I'm not sure. Yeah, but. yeah. Well, I'm looking forward to these new note, uh, these new laptops when they come out, the new MacBook Pros with the new redesign. Uh, when we see those, that should be quite exciting. So, uh, yeah, they're, they're you know they're going from strength to strength as well. So we'll see lots of new products from them over the next twelve months. Obviously, the best place to find you and everything you do is ScreenQuestOnline.com, and I'll have mm-hmm. links in the show notes. But you also do a lot of other things. You do plenty of video shows, and you're a regular on a number of things. Sure. Can you sure. give us a quick rundown so that folks know where to find you and, and see more yeah. of you? Yeah. Um, well, as you say, ScreenQuestOnline.com is, the, is my main site. That's where the uh, weekly tutorials are. Uh, I have a blog, which is the MacScreenCastGuy.com. And I'm um, on Twitter as Don McAllister. I mean, I, I do turn up on other podcasts as well. I sort of occasionally appear on MacBreak Weekly. I do um, a regular stint on a Friday with the a newly relaunched British Tech Network. They do a Mac show on a Friday. Uh, it used to be called Bagel Tech, but um, they're, they're the main ones that I do as well. And of course, uh, the Mac Roundtable as well when we convene every uh, month or two. Should do that more often, you know, but we know the difficulties in getting the gang together. Yeah, and, and I have to tell you, the British tech uh, show is a riot. I, I, yeah. I, I don't know where you found these guys, but it is it is one of the most entertaining shows that, that I know of. So go and check yeah, that out. Yeah, they're a good bunch. I mean, it's, it's, it's not um, – it's, it's a lot of it's tongue-in-cheek. It, to, be, to be honest, it's on a Friday afternoon. I've had a long working week, and uh, it's just nice to hang out with the guys. And we have a uh, – it's, it's never taken too seriously. We always have a bit of a laugh and um, – I think the British humour comes through now and again, you know, so that's good. Oh, it very much does, and it's <laughs> it's. I, I'm not always a, an a aficionado of British humour, but at least mm. I, I get what you guys say most of it, and it, it is it's a riot there. I, yeah, I think we, we have crazy. some international. Yeah, we have some international contributors as well, but I, I always consider it more of a comedy podcast than a, than a Mac podcast. <laughs> kind of sometimes. Yeah. yeah, that's that's well said. <laughs> that's well said. Don, thank you for the time. It's it's always good to see you, whether it's in person or uh, on screen. But we mm-hmm. appreciate everything you do, and please keep it up. Oh, well, thanks for inviting me on. I just uh, Hopefully my voice and my throat will sort itself out for the next time, but I uh, managed just to struggle through, so uh, that's good. No, thanks, Chuck. All right. Folks, that's Don McAllister, screencastsonline.com, and the new SEO tutor for iPhoto for iOS, along with all the other SEOs and everything else that Don just talked about. I'll have links in the show notes to everything. Until the next time, I'm Chuck Joyner, and this is the Talk of the Mac community. Thanks for watching. Voices TV is part of the Mac Voices Group and a member of Mac Level 10. 